Welcome to this, my third Earth Day talk. When I was a Jesuit in training in the mid 90s, I traveled to El Salvador and Guatemala where I would make many friends. And 10 years later, working in camp college campus ministry, I would make more friends in Honduras. Today, I ask myself, beyond prayers or giving donations to worthy organizations, how can I best care for my friends who are facing dire uh, economic conditions and the, and the consequences of climate change? This is the subject of this talk. Do we realize, as Pope Francis teaches, that we need to learn to love all people, Earth itself, and our Creator, or we are not really loving any of the three? In the 19th and 20th centuries, people learned that for love of God, Earth community, and black people and white people, two things had to happen, abolition of slavery and civil rights. In the early 20th century, love for creation, God, and love for women and men meant that something quite real also had to happen, suffrage, voting rights. Today, for us to open our capacity to love all people, Earth and God, two major transitions or conversions must happen. One, the conversion from fossil fuels to clean energy systems. And two, a massive switch from chemicals-based farming to regenerative, soil-friendly farming, which means organic use of cover crops and free-ranging cattle and pigs. How many times has one heard how the richest countries in the world have enjoyed the lion's share of the use of the world's resources, like fossil fuels, while having by far the highest rates of pollution and waste? At the same time, the poorest countries in the world, as in Latin America and Africa, with the smallest amount of carbon emissions and a fraction of the use of the world's resources, have yet suffered the greatest from floods, drought, wildfire, and crop failures. Climate refugees are on the rise and it could accelerate into the tens of millions in the years to come. In the United States, where infrastructure is least resilient and adaptive in the age of superstorms, the most vulnerable communities suffer the worst in deaths, homelessness, and hunger. These injustices are storming the gates of heaven and as members of the body of Christ, our charge is to do something about it. In September 2021, a peer-reviewed study in the scientific journal Nature claimed that more than 90% of coal reserves must remain in the ground, unextracted, and more than 60% of oil and methane gas must also stay below ground for us to have a fighting chance to avoid runaway tipping points in the climate and weather systems. If temperatures were to rise beyond a certain threshold, it means higher probabilities for misery and violence and human die off on a scale we cannot imagine. You want some good news? Leading economists around the world determined in 2020 that the cost of renewable energy projects have become cheaper than even the cheapest coal fire plants and oil projects. With sharp de decreases in the cost of installing wind, solar, or geothermal, resulting from massive investments by the Ch Chinese, the Japanese, and the Europeans, the world can transition to all renewable sources by 2050 or sooner. But the next five to seven years are pivotal, pivotal. The transition from dirty emissions to clean emissions is one thing. But even if we completely stop using fossil fuels today, something else must happen for us to draw down and absorb the carbon already in the atmosphere. For if left in the air, CO2 emission, uh, CO2 itself will continue to mess with the climate system for centuries. Soil. Soil experts have demonstrated the absolute need for regenerative farming, turning away from big agriculture that relies on tons and tons of chemicals and destroys the 
natural fertility of the ground. Healthy soils, by contrast, loaded with microorganisms, stabilize the ground, fight against erosion, replenish the water supply, produce the healthiest foods for our bodies, and have an enormous ability to store carbon, even more so than forests, grasslands, and seaweed farms in our oceans. A rapid shift from fossil fuels to clean energy and rebuilding our soils with regenerative agriculture. These are the two central ways that we can love God's people at a systemic or structural level, having the greatest industrial power for advancing God's economy and kingdom on earth. We love God's poor by keeping fossil fuels in the ground. We love God's poor by ending subsidies to conventional chemicals-based agriculture. We love God's poor by assisting the construction of climate change resilient homes, buildings, cities, and soils all around the world. People, creation, divinity are not separate realities. Everything is interwoven. So we need not suffer false crosses. If we are doing all we can to address climate change in our homes and churches, and especially through public advocacy for systemic change, we can face our crosses with all the hope and courage and fire of the resurrection and believe in the new heavens and the new earth. So let's be people of the resurrection and do everything in our power to build a shining green city on the mountaintop, our ecological new Jerusalem. Please pray for ecological conversion and integral ecology. Specifically, pray for the conversion of our energy systems and for the conversion of our farming systems while taking the necessary steps to put this into practice and to bring this about composting, gardening in our backyards, buying an electric car, installing solar, pan installing solar panels on our rooftops, and electrifying everything. Mostly though, by golly, by electing earth-loving, poor people-loving, and God-loving political and economic leaders. Praise God.